Welcome to Jesus and Me with Pastor Tom Harmon, who is the lead pastor of Kingsville Community Church. Here you will find relevant Bible teachings and practical training about being a follower of Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Tom. And we welcome you who are joining us on the live stream this morning. It's good to have you with us as well. We are looking at the four corners, I call them the four corners of the gospel. The four corners of the gospel. And they are four reoccurring themes that take place throughout the preaching of the apostles. Throughout Peter's preaching and teaching and Paul's teaching and James' teaching and, 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 and John's teaching. And basically, uh, this was what they kind of talked about in the early church. What they they talked about and what kept coming around in all of their messages and these four foundational truths, these four corners is what I'd like to say, is salvation, separation, the spirit and filling, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. They repeat these themes over and over and over and over again through their uh, through their uh, teaching. And so I've been using sermons, uh, their sermons, Peter's sermon, particularly on the day of Pentecost, the first sermon in the early church that was preached. And we see all of these themes in that sermon. And so in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 to verse 40, Peter says, Peter says this, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. This morning we're talking about separation. Last week we talked about salvation. This morning we're talking about separation. And within this salvation message of Peter's, there is separation. There is this call to you and I to be separate. And that is seen in the little word repent, which means to turn away from or to separate yourselves from the life that you were living, from the, the sins and the, the habits that you had, to turn away from those and turn to God and follow God. And then we see separation again where he says it, he pleads with them to save themselves, to step away, to detach themselves from this corrupt generation. And so as we look at separation this morning, our message, the main message is uh, putting the sermon into a sentence. I like to do that. It's this, that God calls you to live a pure life separated for Jesus' purpose and work. That's what salvation is about. It's, it's a call to you and me to be separate and to serve Jesus Christ. To live a pure life that's pleasing and glorifying and honoring, honoring to God. And to live a life that's purposed on His work and His will for us. So we're going to look at this theme today. And we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 19 to 26. Where the Apostle Paul talks to the, uh, his young protege, Timothy. And Timothy is a young man. He's put into the church in Ephesus to be the pastor. And Paul gives him a lot of really practical advice. And one of the areas of really practical advice for the, the Apostle Paul, Paul gives to Timothy is separation. Separation. Timothy is to separate himself. And specifically in 2 Timothy, in the scripture we're reading, uh, he is to separate himself from false teachers. There were two people in the church that had risen up. They had had influence in the church. That happens today. There's people that come along. They get influence in the church. They're popular. They've got charisma. And people get involved in, with them and in their teaching. And Paul says to Timothy, look, you don't, you don't be a part of that and uh, you separate yourself from them and you preach pure, pure truth and, and don't get involved in that and, and don't worry, God will deal with those two people. And so Timothy is called out to separate himself from this false teachers and to, to be distinct, to be absolutely different and to live and teach the truth. But this principle... The principle of separation that Paul teaches here can go with anything in our lives. It applies to gossip. It applies to anger. It applies to bitterness. 
It applies to any sexual sin. It applies to greed. Any sin, anything that you can think of, this area, this understanding, this teaching of separation applies and works in our lives. And so the first thing we see in 2 Timothy is that there needs to be a contrast. There needs to be a contrast. Chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, Paul says this, In a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for a special purpose, made holy and useful to the master and prepared for any good work. So I brought some articles in here that are, are from my... Uh, our need in our my chi uh, china cabinet. We have a china cabinet with you know special dishes. I don't know. Do young people? Do young families have china cabinets anymore? They still they're still there, right? It takes a while to get them, I think. You know, because if you're moving a lot and in rented places, who wants to drag that around, right? So it's when you get your your house and we're going to stay here. You get, usually get something like that. And one of the articles, uh, my favorite article in the whole china cabinet, are these salt and pepper shakers. I'm pretty simple. I like the salt and pepper shakers, and the reason I really like them, we bought them in our first year of marriage and they remind me of my mom and dad. They had a pair like this and they're really heavy because they're silver and uh, they, they cost us a lot of money back then. I imagine they cost a whole lot more money now but they're really special. We don't, uh, we don't use these every day. In fact, we use them only two or three times a year for a birthday or for Christmas or Easter. We pull out the, the silver uh, salt and pepper shaker. And I had to shine this one up because, you know what, they get tarnished. They tarnish really easy. If you have silverware, you know before you use it, you gotta, you gotta clean it up. And that's because it's valuable. Valuable things take more of our effort, don't they, really, to have them. And so we have this very special, uh, very, uh, uh, a vessel of honor in the china cabinet. Okay, so um, I'll put that there. Now another thing that we have in our china cabinet, which doesn't even come close to this, is this. It doesn't look like it belongs in the china cabinet. Uh, the, the, well, the first thing that gives it away is it's a mug. The second thing is, is that it has A&W stamped on it, okay? <laughs> this, we have two of these. I brought one in. This is an A&W mug. And when we were, uh, when, when uh, our children were really, really young, we decided to go out east. And so we went out east, we went through the states, there were no A&Ws in Canada, so when we saw an A&W, we thought, oh, we're going to go there for, for a hamburger, and you could get a kid's meal, you got a free A&W mug. Well, guess what? These mugs became special glasses. The, the, Luke and Ruth Ann, they were just little wee kids, and when we had a special meal with the uh, special salt shaker, along with that on our table came the special mug for the kids to have juice in and man, they knew when these mugs came out man this was really really special and so the A and W mug now one other thing I have in there I have two of these as well now what in the world can you do with that what that is that's just a wooden little wee cup fruitcake an egg holder? A candle holder. Okay, what makes this thing so special? And, and it's cheap. I mean, you can get a bag of these for like 10 bucks, like 100 for 10 bucks. What does that make them, 10 cents each? Where I got this was when I was in Jerusalem at the Garden Tomb, and they gave me communion in this cup. So it's a little 10 cent cup. That's worth, a lot of people just throw them away. I kept mine and I put it there with the china cabinet. So that's what we, we got a whole mixture of stuff in there, you know. And, and what is it that makes this and this as valuable as this? I'll tell you what, it's how we used it. It's how we used it. And this is what Paul is talking about of that contrast in our, 
in our lives. Paul says, you know, in the church you're going to find all different kinds of people. You really are. You're going to find people who live their lives for Christ. You'll find people who are searching and not sure about what they believe. You'll find people that, like in Timothy's church, they were false teachers. They had some weird ideas. Ever met somebody with a weird idea in church? You know, you're okay as long as it's not the pastor, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you'll find some people who are good teachers and, and, and uh, are really spot on biblically. You, you'll find people who are faithful. You'll find people who are not faithful. But, but Paul says this, you can become this vessel of honor even if you're made out of wood or glass, even if you see yourself as an A&W cup or a little wooden thing, it, it doesn't matter. You become a vessel of honor when you change your use and begin to use your life for things that honor God. For things that honor God. In fact, I believe that for every one of us, every one of us, when we came in to the kingdom of God, we were vessels of wood and clay. Every single one of us were vessels of wood and clay. But what makes us vessels of silver and gold is not what we do on the outside, but how we begin to worship and how we begin to honor God with our lives. And Paul says that elevates you and that makes you a vessel of honor that God is able to work in and work through and fashion for every good work. And so this is what sets us apart. This is what separates us. This is the contrast that happens in our lives. And there needs to be a contrast. Paul puts this all through, like I said, these things are found, these themes all through the Word of God. It's one of the cornerstones, one of the foundations. Man, you pull this out of the Bible and you don't preach this stuff and believe this stuff and practice this stuff, you might as well knock the corner out of your house and watch it fall over. Because that's exactly what this is to our spiritual lives. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 11 says this, Paul says, Do you not know that wrongdoers will not enter the, uh, inherit the kingdom of God? Uh, do not be deceived, neither as sexual or moral or idolaters or adulterers, men who have sex with men or thieves or greedy or drunkards or slanderers or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. But here's what he says, and that's what some of you were. You were this. I was this. Most of us could probably stand up there and say, yeah, I kind of find myself in that list. I, I remember a time where I, you know, kind of, I kind of did that stuff. He says, that's what you were, you were vessels of dishonor. But, but, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. I like that. And so he gives us three words here. He says, you were washed. We were washed. The Bible tells us that we were cleansed and we were made pure by Jesus' death on the cross. He washed us. He cleansed us. Because of the power of his blood that was shed, we are forgiven and cleansed of all of our sins. And then it says he was sanctified. That word sanctified means set apart or separated. We're separated. Our life is separated. It's set apart by God for a special purpose. Because we've been clean, we're no longer we're just an A&W mug, we're the special mug for an honor, for honoring, for a special purpose. And we're set apart, we're set apart for God. And then he says, we're justified. And that word, I like to understand that word by just breaking it down and say it's, it means just as if I never sinned. That's what justified means. Just as if I never sinned. We're made pure. We're made holy. We stand before God today as pure and clean vessels of honor. Because God has set us apart. There needs to be a contrast then between what you were before you came to Christ and what you are today because of Jesus. There needs to be a contrast between what you did before you were, Christian, you were a Christian and what you're doing right now. There needs to be a contrast between uh, uh, when you were living for yourself and your own pleasure and now that you are living for God and for God's will and Jesus' pleasure. We're instruments today. You are an instrument. You're not just a person who believes something. You are an instrument in the hands of Jesus for a special purpose, made holy, useful to the Master, and prepared to do every good work for His glory. 
I like the, the scripture that Lynn started the service out with. We are not our own. We are not our own. I think it was uh, 1 Corinthians 6.20 that she quoted. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your bodies. That's, that's the message of separation. I don't belong to myself anymore. I'm the property of Jesus and I'm saved and cleansed and set apart to glorify the Lord with this life, with my body. Moving right along, it, we have a connection. It also means, why do we live apart? Why do we have to be separate? Well, because there's a connection that exists between you and God. And Paul talks about this. 2 Timothy, verse 19, he says this. God's solid foundation, that's Jesus Christ, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. Okay, now there's an inscription on this. The Lord knows who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. My, my, my wife and I became grandparents, and we find ourselves doing stuff that we never ever have done before. Like surfing the internet looking for t-shirts that say grandpa and grandma. And what nif nifty shirt we can get. Because all of a sudden, with this grandchild, with Brock coming along, we have a new identity. We could never ever before say, I'm a grandpa. I'm a grandma. But now we, we, we want, not only do we want to say it, we want to buy the shirt. Because it identifies us. And people use it. You see people with these shirts and it identifies them. For instance, let's take a look at some of the shirts that people put on there. Let's go to the first slide. Where is it here? Okay, photographers. I shoot people and sometimes I cut off their heads. <laughs> I'm a photographer. Yeah. Or, or people with a beard. I thought of some of the people in our congregation could wear this shirt. My beard just started to grow a beard. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the next one. I'm an engineer to save time. Let's just assume I'm never wrong. How many know an engineer like that? I could invite you to some. They attend church here. And uh, there's a whole pile of you like this one. No talkie before coffee. <laughs> these, identify, these identify us. And, and so because they give us an identity, they give us a purpose. There are these inscriptions that we put and they're funny. They are meant to be funny. But behind those, there's something, isn't there? there. And, and this is what God is saying to us. This is what Paul is saying to Timothy. We stand on a foundation that gives us an identity and there's a, there's, it's a designer foundation. There's an inscription that's chiseled right on it and that inscription says you belong. You belong and you belong to the Lord. You belong to Jesus. You're not your own. You belong to him. You're Jesus' property. And it not only says belong, not only do you belong, but I behave in a way that glorifies God. So I belong and I behave. I belong to Jesus and I behave in a way that glorifies God. And that's what, that's what, uh, that's what it's about. That's why Peter says we need to turn away. We need to turn around. We need to face another direction. And we need to separate ourselves and save ourselves from the wickedness that is in this generation. And so it's very important that we ask ourselves, which way are we facing? Which way are you facing? It's very important. It's not just good enough to sit in a church and it's not good enough to sing the songs. Which way are you facing? That is an important question to ask yourself. Because you belong to Christ. And you were called to be a vessel of honor. So which way are you facing today? There needs to be a, a contrast in our lives. And there needs to be that, that separation that changes us. Because we're connected to Christ. And then the last thing that Paul teaches Timothy and talks about here. Is that it begins and it deals with our character. Separation is about your character. It's about your character. In chapters 2, verse 22 to 23, Paul says this to Timothy, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I like that. I like that. 
Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach and not resentful. Paul tells Timothy that godly separation, really it's not about rules at all. It's not about rules at all. And, you know, the, the, the problem I find with people who think that it's rules, is they have this, this long list of rules that they apply to everybody but themselves. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? And, and the more rules that you have, the more opportunity you have to be a hypocrite by not applying that rule to you or to yourself. We were having this discussion a couple of weeks ago about how the rules have changed that at one time, and I'm not picking on folks, okay, I'm not picking on elderly people, okay? I never do that because I'm, I'm joining the club. Okay, I'm joining the club. When I started over 30 years ago in church, if I had a deck of cards in my house, I'd be fired. Now all of those folks who would have fired me back then are sitting in homes playing pepper. See what I mean? The rules will make you look stupid someday. They really will. Whoa, that was probably not politically correct. I, I apologize. But I have had some rules make me look really stupid when I think back that, oh man, I laid that on my young people and I should never have done it. I should never have done it. And that's be and Paul doesn't talk about the rules here, but rather he talks about your character. Your character. Because if your character is right, you don't need the rules. If, you, if your character is right, Paul says, you'll have a pure heart and you'll live in integrity. And that's what separation and holiness is. It isn't a bunch of stupid rules of whether you can play pepper or euchre or whatever. In fact, he says, here's what's important. He says, it's your fruit that's important. It's your fruit that's important. A person whose life is holy and useful for the master has a life that bears spiritual fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This, this, this is not rules. This is our character. This is what's important, folks. And this is what many times we've missed when we focus on other stuff, little stuff, stupid stuff. We need to focus on love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians, it, it, that's found in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But I find 23 and 24 very interesting. He says those, those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. In other words, we've separated ourselves from evil. Since we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And then Paul goes on to say, I didn't include it here, but you can look it up in the next verse, verse 25. He says, these things, if we do them, there's no law that's being broken. In other words, you don't need a law when you're living in integrity. You don't need a law when your character is being fed and influenced and just soaked by the Holy Spirit. You don't need the law because the law and the purposes and love and will of God is written on your heart by God. So it's the fruit in our life. A person whose character is marked by the fruit of the Holy Spirit does not need rules because they have purity of heart and integrity in their step. The second thing is our attitude. The most, point, the most pointless arguments take place in church, folks. Let me say that again. The most pointless arguments take place in church. Just think of all the nonsensical, dumb things you can fight about. And you know what? Not one of them glorifies God. Not one. None. Zero. Zero. Paul is talking here to Timothy. Don't get involved in, in debate or in controversies. Because what they do is they take our focus off of serving Christ. They don't edify anybody. They don't encourage anybody. They cause confusion in young Christians. And they cause hurt feelings in everybody else. And so, stay away from it. It's our attitude that's important here. 
Our fruit in our lives and our attitude towards one another. This is what holiness is in separation. Colossians 4 verse 6 and 7. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. See? There's joy in that. There's peace in that. There's love in that. There's gentleness in that. There's patience in that. There's self-control in that. There's love in that. So that you may know how to answer everyone. We're connected to Christ. There needs to be a contrast between who we were before coming to Christ and who we are today. Your character needs to change. You need to become like Jesus. Paul gives Timothy these closing thoughts. And I think this, this should just focus us. Just, just bang on. In, in chapter 2 verse 25 here. He says, Opponents must be gently instructed. I like that. Gently instructed. In the hope that God will grant them repentance, that they'll become like you, that they'll turn to God, and they'll turn away from their old life. Repentance leading them to the knowledge of the truth, that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Folks, the reason why it's important to live a life that is in contrast to the world to live a life that is connected to Jesus, to live a life that is a life of character, not a life of rules, is because there's a whole lot of people out there that need to see the real deal. They need to see people who are just filled with God and serving God and stand out and are different in their fruit and in their attitude from everybody else around them. And Paul says, when this happens, maybe some of them will come to their senses. And they'll turn too. And they'll turn to God and they'll turn away. And by doing that, they'll get out of the devil's trap. They'll get out of that worldly way of thinking. And they'll begin to follow Jesus Christ. It's as simple as when Jesus said to you and I, You're the light of the world. You're a city built on a hill that can't be hidden. Nor do people and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify God. Your Father, who's in heaven. God calls you and I, it's one of the foundations of everything that is preached and taught in the New Testament. It's a corner. It's a corner post of the house. If you pull it out, the house falls over. Your life won't be lived for God if you don't put this in it. And that is separation. I separate myself to God. I separate myself from the world. I live connected to Jesus because I'm his property now. And I walk in the Holy Spirit by the fruit of the Spirit with an attitude of love and grace. And God, God will use my life. When other people see it, they'll come to their senses. They'll turn to God. And they'll get out of that trap and the rut that they'll live in. And they'll become vessels of honor because they'll be serving Jesus. Father, I thank you today for your love. And Lord, we, we want to be different. We want to live a life that's separated to Jesus. We want to live a life that's pleasing and glorifying to you. But Lord, sometimes there's things in our way. Just like there was things in David's way when he wrote this song. And he came back to you and said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. There's some stuff that's in the way. There's some stuff that's holding me back from being all that I can be in serving you. Let's just bow our heads and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and minister to us. And I'm going to ask the worship, t uh, the, the prayer team, if they come forward at this time, because I think this is so important as we center in on our own life. 
Lord, what is it you want to do in me? How can I better be in tune and connected to you? And is there some stuff that's in the way? Are there some areas of my life that I need to bring to you? I need to surrender to you, Lord. Maybe this morning when you came in, you felt scared. You felt like you didn't belong. You felt guilt. But God has spoken to you and said, you can be a vessel of honor. I have created you to be a vessel of honor. And the way to do that is to turn to me and begin to use your life for my glory. You begin to love people for me. You begin to have patience with people for me. You let the fruit of my life flow through you. You allow me to touch your life and use your gifts and talents. And I'll make you that person and that vessel of honor that I have called you and created you to be. So if you're in that place where you need to turn and there's an area where I need to turn and be more sold out to Jesus, I want you to come forward. Or there's stuff in the way. You don't need to confess the stuff to anybody here. But you do need to deal with it between you and God. Lord, thank you for today. Lord, we go out of here saying we are a vessel of honor. We are a vessel that is honored by God, that lives a life that is pure and clean, that focuses and brings glory to Christ. That's who we are. We are yours, Lord. We are the property of Jesus, used for your kingdom, your glory, filled with your power and your might and your strength. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We hope you have enjoyed Jesus and Me, and we'll listen in again next week. If you would like to know more about Jesus, you can download our free Bible study, Exploring Christ, from our website, kingsvillechurch.com. Just click on the media tab and scroll down to resources. If you would like to make a donation, giving to this ministry can be done on our website using PayPal. Scroll down to the bottom of our home page and click on the PayPal tab. All donations are tax receivable. May God bless you as you follow Jesus.